Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I want to talk about playing Gray Zone Warfare for about four to five hours with a group of friends. This game has really blown me away from a visual standpoint. It's basically an extraction shooter on a massive, massive jungle island where you get dropped into LZs with helicopters, you go on missions, you extract content, you place tracking beacons, you can fight other players, you can fight lots of NPCs. It's a really impressive and ambitious game. And today I wanna just give you my entire impressions on the experience. Now currently the playtest is an invite only situation where the devs have, I think, mostly invited press and content creators out to try out the game and sort of promote it and whatnot. Uh, and this is actually my second impressions. I did get to play the game a little while back and uh, I was impressed with it then, but the performance was not good. It was very janky and uh, inconsistent. This time around, the performance was very impressive. There were a few little drops here and there where the frame rate would drop down to 50 or 60, but I was playing at 4K resolution on a mixture of medium and high settings, and I was getting like 130 to 140 FPS a good chunk of the time. It was very impressive from an FPS perspective. Now I was running DLSS 3 with frame generation on, so that helps a huge amount if you have one of the NVIDIA cars that can do that. But nonetheless, uh, for the visuals of this game, I couldn't believe it was running as smoothly as it was. And you know what, I think that's a pretty good spot to start off with this game is just the visuals in general. The visuals of this game will make you do a double take. Most of the screenshots look like they're promo pre-rendered things. It doesn't look like gameplay almost because who would render out a giant massive endless jungle that looks incredible and still have it be performant? Well, somehow these guys have figured it out. They have their own custom foliage system that can render trees, grass, bushes, and it does shadows at range, which is a huge thing in these types of games because what a lot of games do is they have to cull the shadows. They have to turn off the shadows in the distance because it's just too uh, expensive on your GPUs when you're trying to render out a full scene. Somehow they figured out how to keep the shadows there and what that allows you to do is hide in the shadows at distance and basically blend into the environment. It's very hard to see players or AI in this game if they're not moving. Basically you, you have to wait till somebody moves around or shoots a gun and then locate them which is pretty crazy. The foliage system also reacts to wind and even when uh, bullets pass through bushes and stuff, you'll see the bush shake a little bit if like a bullet hits one of the branches in that bush. Beyond the foliage, which is probably the highlight of the visuals for this game, the character models are also really fantastic and the animations for them look incredible. I think that's something that I started to figure out as I was playing, why does this game feel so immersive, so real? Part of it is that the characters just move around in very militaristic, realistic ways. They're animations aren't weird and exaggerated. They all look like they're just a group of trained operatives moving through the bush. And it's pretty dope. There aren't a lot of things that pull you out of the experience and go, hey, this is a game just in case you forgot. Now, one of the other really cool change ups that Grey Zone makes to say a traditional extraction shooter is that the servers are persistent. There isn't a server that's spun up just to play a match and then the match ends and then the server closes down or cycles to a new match after that the level is just going to be there and people will join and leave at any time throughout the match so there isn't like a countdown timer for any of this stuff uh it, you could join a server go out into a city and there could already be a bunch of squads out there already operating and it adds this real sense of presence to the world you can move as quickly or as slowly as you want in many situations, which again is very realistic. If you wanna just sit on the side of a road and scat out a location for five, 10 minutes, you can do that and not have to worry about some circle closing down or some timer running out. Now, because the map in this game is absolutely massive and it doesn't seem like they have plans for drivable vehicles at any point in the future. One of the ways to help you get around a little bit quicker is with these little bird helicopters that'll take you out to LZs, landing zones. 
And you have a few LZs right around your main base when you start, but as you go out and explore the world, you will then discover new LZs, which you then basically uh, have saved. And you can use those to get back to those locations at any other point, and you can use them as pickup locations too. So it's very cool. It helps you move around the map, but you're still pretty slow. So if somebody says, hey, come to city whatever, and you're in the middle of a rice paddy somewhere, uh, it could take you 10, 15 minutes, maybe longer to get somewhere. There's also a robust stamina, food and drink system, along with he healing system where you need lots of different types of medical supplies to treat different wounds and injuries. Um, the stamina system will slow you down as well when you're traversing between locations. So you can't just sprint the whole time. And it's both cool and annoying depending on how you look at it. The cool side of it is that you'll just be kind of walking at a normal pace with a bunch of friends through some rice patties, kind of shooting the shit and talking about stuff. And it, it just feels really authentic, like you're actually in the environment. Uh, the downside is that when you have to get somewhere quickly or somebody's waiting on you to get there and you're like fighting your stamina and being like, I'll be right there, guys. Sorry, I just got to like slow down for a second. My character's panting. Uh, then it feels a little tiresome. I feel like they could use a little bit of balance there, but it is pretty cool. Now, something that everybody in the party was noticing was that the in-game comms sound incredible. So it, it felt like it was Discord or better level quality, which is really great, especially if you're playing with players who have a decent microphone setup. They don't have dogs barking and weird stuff going on in the background. It sounds really good. They also have a time limit system in there for how much you can use the comms to avoid spamming. This is both cool and bad. I could see it being good for matchmaking with randoms where you just don't want somebody to talk your ear off about something or annoy you. But when you're playing with friends, it seems like an unnecessary restriction. And multiple times when you're using the in-game comms and somebody was trying to describe something or explain something, they would get cut off before they could finish. So it would be nice to be able to have that as an option for maybe squads of people on your friends list wouldn't have communication restrictions, or maybe you just hop on a Discord at that point. Now the weapon models in game also look really great. They sound great. It's fairly easy to recognize the different weapons weapons at distance, we were running into a couple issues where sounds didn't play at certain distances. It felt like maybe some of the sound calling was a little aggressive. So if somebody was say four or 500 meters away, you might not actually hear the sound of their weapon in the distance. I'm not sure if this is by design or they're still tweaking it, but there was a few situations where players in the squad were calling out shots that they heard and other people in the party couldn't hear him because we were like, I don't know, 50 meters behind him. And it's like, mm, it doesn't seem like that sound should have dissipated uh, over 50 meters. So there's a little bit of sound stuff going on, but nothing that doesn't seem like it could be easily tweakable. Now, I want to get a little bit deeper into some criticisms and feedback for the game, but I do want to reiterate that overall, I am incredibly impressed with Grey Zone Warfare. I think it's innovating the extraction shooter in really cool, meaningful ways. I think a lot of people are going to want to play this at launch. The longevity of the game, though, is something that, well, we'll have to wait and see. Currently, the mission system in the game is a little bit basic. It's a little bit clunky. It's mostly go in, grab an item, extract with that item, or place a tracker somewhere. And it's got some clunkiness to it where if you join a party and you're all working on the same mission, everybody has to pick up the exact same item and take that exact same item back. There's just some quality of life design clunkiness to some of the mission stuff and I'm not totally on board with it. I also don't know what the end game version of missions are going to be or how they're going to evolve. So having in game events pop up, local events, things that you could run to or try and do, uh, I think could definitely elevate this game. And I would imagine the devs have it planned out. But as for what I was testing, the missions were all just overly simplistic and kind of uninteresting. Now, a lot of people were pointing out that they thought the weapons were being rendered really small. It seems kind of closer to Counter-Strike size when you compare it for the screen size versus what a lot of modern games are doing. I wasn't too much bothered by this. I think it's an aesthetic choice. What I was bothered by is the optic rendering in this game. The way optics look in FPSs is, is, is a big pet peeve of mine when they're not done right. And I think Grey Zone Warfare does it really poorly. 
the EOTech is like this tiny little thing on screen. The housing of the optic obstructs your vision. The red dot's hard to see. It's just so weird that they don't bring it closer to the screen and give you a better field of view with stuff. The ACOG is the same way. It just is this tiny little circle in the middle of your screen. I don't like how it looks. It might be done for maybe performance, rendering performance, if they're doing picture-in-picture -picture type tech there, but uh, whatever it is, it's some of my least favorite optic rendering in a modern shooter game. Now, coming from other survival or extraction shooters, I have to say the inventory size felt pretty small for the most part. You go in to complete an objective and you usually have just enough inventory to grab whatever item you might need and get out. There isn't a lot of room for picking up extra guns, all kinds of cool things that, like uh, extra armor, extra clothing. There's just hardly any room in your inventory. A lot of it's taken up by medical supplies that you would need to treat injuries. So it's possible that maybe down the road, you would have a squad mate that carries most of the medical equipment that you might need and it goes around medicking people. But at the same time, it just felt a little unnecessarily cumbersome to not be able to pick up a bunch of stuff and have some cool backup items on you and whatnot. Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but they, they're going for like a realistic angle. I think at the expense of maybe just enjoying picking up more things and exploring the loot table. Now, one of the things I like most about the game is also something that's really hard to dial in, and that's the immersion. And one thing that helps with immersion is reduced UI, not having tons of things on your screen distracting you and reminding you that, hey, guess what? This is a game and there's going to be all kinds of little markers and stuff. There's so few markers that it's really difficult to tell friend from foe, especially at any sort of distance. 50 meters plus everybody just kind of looks like a general greenish brownish type enemy and you have no idea if it's an enemy a friendly you basically have to open up your map look where all your friendlies are on your map then close it and be like okay that guy is a friendly that guy's an enemy it's not very good for on the spot firefights or seeing somebody in cqb there is multiple times where I saw enemy players and I hesitated because I didn't want to shoot a teammate. Uh, there wasn't enough clear visual markers to tell me that that guy was from a different faction. I see this being really annoying for a lot of new players and maybe even for veteran players because I the, the visual markers that distinguish you from players from another faction seem extremely subtle, especially if you start picking up all the same gear and equipment uh, off of NPCs in the world, you might all just end up looking pretty much identical at the end of the day. The other weird point here is that the game is built around three factions and basically when you pick a faction i think you're locked into that faction which is kind of a planet side to approach or just a planet side approach to gaming but it almost feels like it's not really appropriate here like the factions aren't particularly interesting i didn't feel any sort of deep lore crafting around each faction so it's just sort of like ah just pick one at random hopefully it's the one that your friends are playing it could be annoying if your friends are on different factions than you and then you can't play with them or you have to recreate a new character i'm not quite sure how that works but I gotta say, I wasn't loving the whole three fraction approach to the game. I don't mind it in the server, but locking you into it as your overall character felt kind of weird. I'd have to see if there's a lot more depth and interesting stuff behind it, but at this point, it seems mostly like a thing that's gonna inhibit you from playing with friends or just become an annoyance, at least in the early stages of the game. Now, along with the inventory feeling extra small, there isn't too much looting opportunities in the open world which makes the world feel less alive in juxtaposition of the incredible visuals and reactivity of the foliage you'll be walking by a car and you can't really open a door or loot the trunk or interact with a lot of things that you might expect to be able to so some of that makes the world feel a little less alive and i don't know if this is all by game design to make the overall game feel less reliant on looting and more reliant on just mission running We'll have to see how that plays out in the long run, because if they're going to make it much more reliant on mission running and, say, just fighting other players, then I think the missions need to be much more interesting at the start. And at the moment, I it seems like they only have one map plan. There is this sort of uh, secret zone in the center of the map that I haven't explored yet. Um, 
but I'm wondering how much content people are going to be able to get out of this single map. It's a very beautiful, awesome map to explore, but after you've been running through rice paddies for, you know, two to three hours, you go, okay, well, what's what comes after this, right? I, I can already see myself wanting a little bit extra of environmental content for the game but again this is just a very early test we haven't tried any late game missions so maybe there's a lot of extra stuff sort of hidden uh behind the mission system i do like the ai in the game they are threatening they shoot at you from extremely long ranges they can do a huge amount of damage to you so if you're not moving tactically and communicating well they'll absolutely drop you there are some bugs with them, though. Uh, a lot of them were just tanking rounds. Some of them that didn't appear to be wearing any armor would sometimes take way too much damage. There, there seemed to be a little bit of bugginess, and it could have been server netcode or some sort of game bug. Not really sure what it was, but pretty much everybody was noticing that during the play session. So to try and wrap this whole thing up, I think Gray Zone Warfare is doing some really cool, really innovative stuff. Uh, it's sort of double A size. I think their dev teams around like 80 people or something like that. And it's exciting to see people taking risks like this and trying to evolve something. And they really seem passionate about creating this project. The few areas that hold it back seem like kind of basic game stuff, like simplistic mission design, some clunky UI and teamwork mechanics and stuff like that. And things that seem like they might be erring too much on the side of realism versus things that could make the game a little bit more fun. But nothing that seems super locked in or like it couldn't be adjusted or tweaked or balanced. So I think they're in a fantastic spot to basically refine and improve this game as it comes out. And I, I can't wait for the full launch of this. I'm excited to grind missions and rank up and see where all of that goes. Because at the moment, uh, four to five hours in, I just don't really know yet. And if you want to see a more live version of the gameplay, check out my stream right here. You can watch all of it. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe for more content like it. Ding the notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.